What do you want the category to be? Parts of the body. Penis. Ah! This is going great. Uh, head. What? Okay, go. Just pre- Lungs. Okay, <laughs> press it. Oh. Um, ovaries. Nice. Wow. Finger. Mouth. Immune system. Balls. Eyes. Dick. Gonads. That counts as a different terminology. Oh! Uh, nose. Uh, sphincter. Ass. Uh, huevos. (laughs) Titties! Uh, uh... Uh, giblets. <laughs> <laughs> giblets? Uh, we, we're down to a mall? I guess K. K. Uh, Cock with a K. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> Josh! That was a great category, if I may say so myself. Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction. It's Corbin. I'm a physician. He is not. Do not take his medical advice. Yes. Always, always do it. Whenever it is, do it with your body. Anyways, today we got an interview with the one and only, the great Irfan Khan. That makes me happy. He's, and sad at the same time. He, I feel like he should be a sir. I know he's not British. I just feel like when you like Sir Anthony Hopkins, I know it's because he's British, but like he's bigger than that. I feel like Irfan. I think I love that it's just like Irfan. You don't even need the last name. You know somebody's massive in their just their aura when they don't need a last name. Looks like this is from 2015. Uh, Irfan Khan is wooing audiences east and west is the title. He was and always will. Ah, yes. And I would... It's been too long. What was our last Irfan film? It's been way too long. (laughs) What was it? One of the last was... um, the one with the taboo. They moved to America. Namesake? Namesake was one of the last... That was over a year ago. There's no I know. Way. There's no way that was... It's one of the last. If it wasn't the last, it was like the second to last. But I don't I don't know. Anyways. That, which is bad. We, we shouldn't go that long. Oh, never. He's too... What's your favorite uh, earphone film there, uh, Indrani? Talk in the microphone. Lunchbox. Yeah, okay, besides the lunchbox. Lunchbox. Has... No, besides the lunchbox. Box lunch. <laughs> Well, uh, it's uh, where um, Life of Pi. I was yeah. just going to say, it really is for me. He, he's so beautiful in that mm. movie and his narration. And then the final moments, there's no one who would have done the the, the, the the sensitivity and the humanness that he brought sure to that is. character. Brendan Fraser. Well, I actually love Brendan Fraser. In the same conversation as Irfan? No. Exactly. But I don't use him to <laughs> mock. I, do. I actually like Brendan Fraser. <laughs> My wife is giving me head. Ifan Khan is becoming a familiar... Ifan Khan! Appearing in Danny Boyle's multiple Academy Award winning film, Slumdog Millionaire. Starring in Ang Lee's Oscar decorated Life of Pi. I suppose in the end the whole of life becomes an act of letting go. And featuring in Mark Webb's blockbuster, The Amazing Spider-Man. We're not finished. Oh yeah, he was in that. Where on earth are you going to find the people to volunteer? What? As far as anyone's concerned, it's for a winter flu shot. But Khan has been catching the eye of directors in the West since his first international debut in Miranair's 2006 film, The Namesake. You know, I feel a special kinship with Gogol more than with any other writer. Soon after, he was cast alongside Angelina Jolie in Michael Winterbottom's retelling of the kidnapping and murder of U.S. journalist Daniel Cohen. No, I never saw that. I did would you? love to see that. No. A mighty heart is what it's called. What, what did he say? He's not involved. But Khan's success is not limited to the silver screen in the U.S. 
<laughs> in his native India, he is a household name, counted among Bollywood's leading men. He should be a household name everywhere. Always that of a typical Indian hero. With more than 50 domestic films to his name, his popular performances include modest characters. From a village barber... <laughs> <laughs> to a retired Olympic athlete turned rebel, helping him win scores of awards for his talents along the way. This month on Talk Asia, we're in Mumbai at the home of internationally acclaimed Bollywood star Ifan Khan. I miss him so much. So much. If like we had started the channel three years earlier, I know we might have had the opportunity to speak with him. Thank you. You are one of India's best-known exports to Hollywood. Uh, one of those rare Bollywood stars with global appeal. Is this something that you set out to achieve? I never thought of. Uh, it never occurred in my mind that I could go there and I could work in those films. But definitely in India, I was looking kind of my kind of work where I could find myself, where I could enjoy telling a story mm. that was definitely a quest and uh, mm. it'll manifest in getting work in Hollywood that I never imagined I never thought about it it just had happened automatically because it's one thing to be a big star in, in Bollywood let alone make a name for yourself you know in the West I'm pretty really fortunate you know I'm, I don't know what is the formula of that well, what is the secret okay, but I'm, I'm not going to tell you now <laughs> <laughs> is there any resentment towards your success here in India? It's not a resentment. It never was a resentment. You know, see, the industry is, uh, uh, they are looking for new talent all the time. It's up to the talent whether they want, they want themselves to be incorporated in that kind of storytelling. And there's other part where you, you have to make profit out of it. So I've been very conscious of uh, picking up stories which are viable. So that's why, you know, I was not, uh, I, could, I could survive and I could, I could convince people that, you know, and I could make few people uh, easy with my own existence that, you know, I'm there, I'll make money for you, but I'll do my kind of work. Well, I want to take you back to your beginnings. Uh, you were the eldest son in an aristocratic Muslim family from Jaipur. Your family didn't allow you to watch film. And yet you were drawn to this medium. Yeah. Why is that? I don't know. It was a mystery. I, in my, in my village where I'm from, Tonk, there was a theatre uh, besides our my, my aunt's house. So we used to go there, and there was a gatekeeper who was also a woman. So you know we used to request her, can we go inside? Can we go inside? So she used to you know just let us in for 10, 15 minutes. And we used to watch this cinema and there was something, you know, which used to capture us. And I thought, this is something mysterious. This is something I would like to do. But I was very shy. Very, very shy. And uh, I was not, I was very thin and I was dark. There was all, everything which was against being an actor, you know. Because I would think that if you were shy, yeah. you know, acting wouldn't be the job for you. Yeah. And also... You'd be surprised. Films which are which takes you out of your life and gives you a kind of uh, dream world for for, for for hours and for two hours and and make you f make you forget about your own world. So we and we have uh, uh, actors which are so called good looking, smart, you know, uh, pretty faces. So I had nothing of that. So I had uh, not true many doubts about myself, but there's a kind of drive which I couldn't shed. Well, I, I read somewhere that you said, I was trying to connect to something that could make me feel more complete. Uh, yeah. Some would say that would take a, a lifelong journey. <laughs> I, was, I was looking for engagement, mm. something which can engage me where I don't feel bored. I started doing certain things and I, I put a lot of, lot of hard work in that. It was an, a, a training for air conditioning. So I did, uh, you know, with full sincerity and seriousness, I did the training. But then when I started going for practicals, you know, to, to door to door, that was a trauma. Installing air conditioners not for you. Yo, it was very boring. <laughs> very boring. Tell me about your years at the National School of Drama. Oh, that was fantastic. 
first thing that I was not eligible when I when I when I filled the form of National School of Drama, and uh, my practical experience was not enough. But I was so so compelled and so driven to get admission there. I just you know I just lied. I you know I filled you know names which I didn't do. Also, not uncommon. I don't know. Uh, I got the admission. <laughs> I thought, you know, now some, some Especially teacher, back in the day, not uncommon at all. The formula of acting. And I start acting. And so I, I struggled there, you know, to understand and to, I used to question. Because back in the day, nobody could check. Them. Yeah. But you got the internet now. Slowly, slowly, I, I, I realized that it's, it's, you are your own teacher. You have to find there's not a one formula or one method which can make you actor. Well, you graduated and yeah. did many TV roles, but you yeah. found those to be boring and after a while I thought you'd quit. <laughs> TV I did and the TV gave me a lot of practice. Mm. And, uh, but that was a time when private channels were just coming in India and soaps of, you know, earlier we had a uh, series of 30 episodes or 26 episodes. Now there were series which are going on for 500 episodes, 600 episodes. So what what was happening in that that you you do one scene and if the the, the you know the content of the scene uh, if the if it's liked by audience then what the producer and director used to do they key, used to keep repeating that pattern again and again mm. in different episodes in different ways so i was getting you know really bored <laughs> <laughs> and then I started uh, directing so I thought you know direction needs much more uh, you know, work than actor so uh, it will engage me more you know it will keep me busy so I did few few episodes but then suddenly you know I out of the blue I got a chance which I was waiting for the warrior the warrior yeah that changed my life so the film what film did Asif Kapadia, who's directing uh, Warrior, he said, don't do anything. Don't even say lines. I just I just wanted to be in the situation and see where it takes me. And I thought this is something, uh, this is what I was looking for as an actor. And that was the time I, I decided I'm not going to produce, I'm not going to direct television. That's the first time I realized that life is showing me a direction so I should leave myself to that and see what happens. A Mighty Heart, which of course is the yeah. story about the kidnapping and murder of Daniel Pearl. Were there any issues as an Indian playing a Pakistani? Oh. Oh, that's it. Oh, that's a part that's one, I guess. Oh, sorry. I didn't. I, I was ready to listen to your fun more. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Did. Is there video out there of your fun in in the soap operas? Because I'd love to see I that. I want to see that. Me too. <laughs> I kind of want to see that. I would like to see that. Your fun in the beginning before he's your fun con in a soap opera. I agree. That's. I know. It's, I know. There's still a thing, but it's not really the stepping stone that it used to be. Oh, not at all. Because it used to be a stepping stone here. It 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 was. It's not. At all, I know that directly from a man yeah. uh, who's a friend of mine who directed soaps for 25 years, uh, one soap in particular. And not only are there less soaps, but n uh, they're viewed no differently as far as TV and film. You might as well have been doing theater the whole time. Mm -hmm. They see a soap opera on your resume. You could have won a freaking Emmy for your soap opera. Don't care. <laughs> yeah. And it used to be a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, two things he said that I thought were interesting. Uh, one was, it was interesting that he brought up one of the typical things, Nawaz brought this up too, that starting out, that American actors don't ever have to think about uh, in the same way. And she, it either it didn't register or she just went past it. But when he mentioned that he was dark. Dark, yeah. yeah. And then he mentioned something else about his script selection. And if he were around, I'd want to ask him this, because he said that he chose stories that were viable. So in his selection, it was more than just great storytelling. I wonder how many stories he read that he thought the story itself was a magnificent story, 
but he didn't find it to have a box office viability. And so he, he gave both. It had to be a great story, but it also had to have some semblance of box office viability for him to invest himself enough into it, which yeah. is, is a, an idea for me that I don't would never consider, but it makes you wonder ought you consider that especially when you're at the level that yeah. he was at you you only have to consider that when you're at a exactly level. when you're at that level um and how often did he make decisions because you know he did there were times he knew he had to do something and box office viability had didn't matter whatsoever yeah yeah and i he was i know he turned down inception because mm -hmm. nolan wanted yeah him in inception and yeah. he turned it down i think to do the lunchbox which I'm, I'm obviously I'm glad. I wish they could have worked out both, both because I think more people would have known the wonderful man and actor that is Irfan. Yeah, if he was in that, and and it would have been a meaty role. Yeah, as opposed to you know just uh in like Jurassic World where he's sure. the, the the owner of the park or whatever. Right. Um. The or I mean, no, it medias, would have been a his, substantial. His media in Hollywood was obviously Life of Pi, which a lot of people saw. Yeah, but nothing. I mean. Everybody thought of him here as a very recognizable supporting actor at best as far as the roles that he got. But not somebody not who could who, carry a film. Not not who you actually was. Exactly. He was one of the greatest actors ever. Uh, of all time. Right. Um, and which is obviously there's a ton of actors in India and, and around the world that people yeah. don't realize that. Yeah, of course. But he's he's one of my favorites and I'm so sad he's gone. Yeah. Because I, I love the man and I love his acting yeah he is one of the big losses of all time in cinema so 50 something is way too young yeah you can you can go back to the losses of james dean heath ledger philip seymour hoffman um earphones in that category somebody like 50s it's sickening it makes you sad to think how many more years of work he could have had ahead of him how many more films he could have made his basically half his life's work was cut short. That's very sad. It is. Anyways, uh, I know there's a bunch of his that we need to. Quap Cop single, I know, is, is one. Um, Black List? Is it Black List? I think that's with Rishi something. Me, no, no. And then there's um, Life in a Metro. Yes. That uh, we have not uh, seen. Recommend. Um, but, and of course, anybody got those soaps? <laughs> but, Just a clip. We'd love to see a clip. Uh, please let us know what our next Irfan film should. I want to get to one soon. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm sick of not seeing his face. Yeah. Uh, so let us know which that should be down below. Josh!